Hey everyone! In our last video, we talked about how DC motors work. Today, we're diving into the other type of motor that is widely used the AC synchronous motors. You can find them in things like microwave turntables, HVAC systems, and more. So, what exactly is an AC synchronous motor? The AC synchronous motor is a type of machine that converts electrical energy from an alternating current or AC supply into mechanical energy. Let's break down how it works. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. An AC motor is made up of two main parts, the stator and the rotor. The stator, as its name suggests, is stationary and plays a crucial role in creating a rotating magnetic field. But how exactly does this happen? To understand this, let's picture a simple three-phase AC motor with windings labeled R, Y, and B. The other end is labeled R prime, Y prime, and B prime. Imagine viewing this from the front, it's like turning a 3D motor into a flat 2D diagram. When we apply a three-phase supply, current begins to flow through these windings. Picture it. Current flowing into the screen is marked by a cross, while current flowing out of the screen is represented by a dot. At the starting point of zero degrees, the red phase carries zero current, while the yellow and blue phases have current flowing in opposite directions. The positive current in the blue phase flows into B and out of B prime, while the negative current in the yellow phase flows into Y prime and out of Y. By applying the right hand grip rule, where your fingers curl in the direction of the current, we can determine the direction of the magnetic fields for the yellow and blue phases. These magnetic fields combine to create a resultant magnetic field. Next, at 30 degrees, current flow in all three coils, based on the current entering and exiting the screen for each of the red, yellow, and blue phases, we use the right-hand grip rule again to identify the magnetic field directions for each phase. These fields merge to form a resultant field, which has now rotated anti-clockwise. By following similar steps at subsequent angles, we observe the formation of a rotating magnetic field. The speed at which the rotating magnetic field rotates is known as synchronous speed, measured in rounds per minute or RPM. This simple illustration explains how a three-phase current generates a rotating magnetic field at the stator without any physical movement. Now let's shift our focus to the rotor. The rotor attached to the motor shaft is what actually moves and rotates. It gains mechanical force from the interaction with the stator's rotating magnetic field. There are two main types of AC motors, synchronous motors and induction motors. A synchronous motor operates at synchronous speed. This means the rotor's rotating speed matches the speed of the stator's rotating magnetic field. This synchronization is achieved through magnetic locking, where the rotor, acting as an electromagnet, is attracted to the rotating magnetic field of the stator, making them rotate together. We'll dive into this in more detail shortly. On the other hand, an induction motor works a bit differently. Its rotor has short-circuited windings, for example, a squirrel cage rotor. When the stator's rotating magnetic field is applied, it changes the magnetic flux across the rotor, which in turn induces a current in the rotor's short-circuited windings. According to Fleming's left-hand rule, which we discussed in our last video, this induced current flow, together with the stator's magnetic field, generates the torque that causes the rotor to rotate. Unlike synchronous motors, induction motors cannot run at synchronous speed. Their rotor speed lags slightly behind the rotating magnetic field. This is known as slip. This slip allows the stator's rotating magnetic field to continuously cut through the rotor windings, inducing the current and generating the torque necessary for rotation. If an induction motor were to run at synchronous speed, there would be no relative motion between the rotating magnetic field and the rotor resulting in no changes the magnetic flux across rotor, no induced EMF, no current flow, and ultimately no torque. In this video, we will focus more on the synchronous motor. The synchronous speed of an AC motor can be determined by the power supply frequency and the number of poles per phase in the stator. For instance, let's consider our earlier example of the simple three-phase AC motor stator. In the diagram, we can identify a total of six poles. 
To find the number of poles per phase, we divide the total number of poles by 3 because it's a three-phase system, resulting in two poles per phase. If the power supply frequency is 50 Hz, the synchronous speed of the motor can be calculated as 3000 RPM. Synchronous motors require two electrical inputs, an AC power supply connected to the stator and a DC supply connected to the rotor. The AC supply to the stator generates a rotating magnetic flux, while the DC supply to the rotor generates a constant magnetic field, turning the rotor into an electromagnet. When the magnetic poles of the stator and rotor are the same, the rotor experiences a repulsive force. But when the poles are opposite, the rotor feels an attractive force. This push-pull interaction causes the rotor to lock onto the stator's rotating magnetic field, turning into alignment with it. But wait, there's a catch. Beyond a certain capacity or size, a synchronous motor cannot self-start due to the rotor's inertia, which tends to keep it stationary during startup. Let's assume the rotor starts at a horizontal position and visualize this with two instances. When we first apply a three-phase AC supply to the stator and a DC supply to the rotor, magnetic fields are produced on both the stator and rotor. Initially, due to the attractive and repulsive forces between the poles, the torque will tend to move the rotor in an anti-clockwise direction. But because of the rotor's inertia and the high speed of the stator's rotating magnetic field, the stator's field quickly moves to the other half cycle, while the rotor remains almost in the same position. In this second moment, the torque will be in the clockwise direction. As a result, the net torque from these two instances is approximately zero. This process repeats, causing the rotor to oscillate back and forth without locking onto the stator's rotating magnetic field. This condition is also known as hunting. This is where clever techniques like damper windings or an auxiliary motor come to the rescue. These methods help create conditions similar to those in an induction motor, assisting the rotor in getting up near synchronous speed before applying DC supply to the rotor. Here's how it works. Extra short-circuited windings are added to the rotor. When the stator's rotating magnetic field is applied, current is induced in these short-circuited windings, generating the torque needed to turn the rotor in one direction. As the rotor speed gets closer to synchronous speed, the DC supply kicks in to establish magnetic locking. Once this happens and the motor reaches synchronous speed, there's no relative motion between the stator's rotating magnetic field and the damper windings. This means no more current or additional torque is induced in the damper windings, and the rotor keeps spinning, perfectly locked with the stator's rotating magnetic field. Now let's shift our focus to some characteristics of AC synchronous motor. Here's something unique about synchronous motors. They have the ability to control the power factor of an electrical system. A synchronous motor used for power factor correction is known as a synchronous condenser. Its primary function is to supply or absorb reactive power by adjusting the field current of the rotor. To understand this, let's examine the equivalent circuit of one of the phases in a synchronous motor. In this circuit are one and x1, represent the resistance and reactance of the stator windings, while R2 and X2 represent those of the rotor windings. When stator is connected to an AC source, alternating current flows through the stator windings. Simultaneously, a field current is applied to the rotor via a DC source. As the rotor spins at synchronous speed, its constant magnetic field cuts through the stator windings, inducing a back EMF at the stator. Here's the key part. By adjusting the field current, we can control the strength of the rotor's magnetic field. This, in turn, affects the magnitude of the induced back EMF and the power factor at the stator windings. There are three main operating regions, unity power factor, which occurs when the induced back EMF equals the source voltage, under excitation or lagging power factor, which happens when the induced back EMF is smaller than the source voltage, and over excitation, which produces a leading power factor when the induced back EMF is larger than the source voltage. These three operations can also be illustrated through phasor diagrams. To summarize, AC synchronous motor plays a crucial role in power factor correction by providing reactive power compensation in an electrical system. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about the applications of AC synchronous motors. 
AC synchronous motors are widely used in various industrial settings due to their ability to maintain a constant synchronous speed under varying loads. They are used in pumps, compressors, spinning and weaving machines, crushers, conveyor systems, and many other equipment. That's it for today's video. I hope this gives you a solid understanding of the basics of AC synchronous motors, their working principles, and their applications. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.